Hi, I'm Julia and today I thought I was going to just do a little quick share of this sketchbook, other known as a sketchbook tour. So I used this one from April to the last of July, so it went by really quickly and I don't usually go through my sketchbooks or art journals this quickly, uh, but I think it's a testament to that I actually really liked it. Uh, it is also kind of small, so yeah. This is a uh, sea white of a Brighton. So cellulose paper, and I think it's just like 200 GSM or something. It's kind of, uh, I mean, it's good paper. I've really liked it, but it's not like, you know, the thick, the thick one. Stickers on the front is by Amy Holiday because I like her stuff. <laughs> I have a little metal thing from Tim Holtz. And this is the Swedish art store they just put their branding out here. I have to say the little page ribbon and the elastic here I have not used at all. So the first spread here uh, I set outside to paint so I actually have a video of this page and then journal a little bit. I had the intention of doing more stamping, more like art journal and more like be more free with it but it, it turned out to be just another watercolor sketchbook. So. <laughs> I have done some earth cellars here. I just head over to Pinterest because I really like doing it. So nothing much here. Here I really try to do more of that, you know, art journal-y, journaling style. So I have some uh, images. So here we have a window and that is sort of a close-up of those flowers. A bigger tulip. Uh, I also used some highlighters and pit. What do you call it? the pit artist um, with the ink pens and I also use these letter stamps quite a lot. I really like them and I just use a brush pen with the ink I want. Another little in uh, Pinterest find documented here. This one I actually really like so I decided to draw this one again but on proper paper with watercolor and gouache and colored pencils and I like that version so much I made it into a sticker so. <laughs> but I'm really happy that I could sit down quickly in my sketchbook and just get the idea down on paper even though I don't like this version so much but I'm happy that I actually have this sort of idea here. I also really like reading history magazines and I subscribe to a few of them. I mean I like to read about history and learning about but I also really like having the a lot of images like I really like having images in my hand you know so here I have done Anne Boleyn and Isabella of Castile. I'm actually really happy with the um, with the veil hair on Isabella. I think that turned out really, really cool. And then I decided to go like with all black around uh, Anne here. And I, I really like them. On the other side, we have a zebra because why not, I suppose? No, but I think it, this one, I did the underpainting here with Indian Gold by White Knight. And then I gone over where I wanted all of the like, you know, little hairs. I did that with masking fluid and then the background so I could get this sort of light shining through and I'm really happy with the effect on that. Um, and I think this paper takes watercolor really well, but you can see here when I do the bigger washes, it doesn't really handle as well as a proper paper. But when I'm working on a little, little bit of a smaller scale, uh, I think it handles really well. And I use those wood stamps here as well. Here I, I just continue with the with the magazine and I found this of Selma Lagla, which is a Swedish writer. Then I was like, oh, and I could do this one. And that was Mary Shelley. And I was like, okay, on the other side, I should continue on with the same theme. So then I looked up a picture of Agatha Christie and then I felt like I need to do Jane Austen because she is, those two are my, my favorite female authors. So, and I took some liberties with the Jane Austen. There is not many images of her, so. Uh, here is actually a picture I'm really proud of. I don't really like it, like aesthetically. I don't think it looks very good, but the actual technique, the fact that I spend most of the time with this one actually just looking and spending most time drawing something from life. I hardly ever do that. It was really, really nice. And when you when you do stuff like this, where I have images to draw off of, you, you sort of copying uh, an image. But here, you need to be mindful like where you put your head yourself because just, I mean, if I have it like this and I'm drawing it and I just slightly tilt my head, it's a completely different angle, you know? So I'm really trying to practice that. Well, I say I try to practice that. Uh, I mostly try to avoid doing that <laughs> because I think it's so hard. But I'm really happy with the actual like 
little glass drink and the slices of oranges. I feel like it looks good. I'm not too happy with the background, but that's that's another day. I got some new art stuff from Jackson's Art here and I just did a little swatching. I think this is like a little bit fun, a bit of a memory keeping thing to remember when I bought stuff. So uh, here I decided to just have some fun and do a little bit of a sort of like a mood board slash collage slash actually use a sketchbook. So I have some washi tape that is my own design. It's black with black stars. And then I had some vellum thing. I had a really nice sticker here. And then I just did different things with that sort of theme, uh, experimenting with just using indigo and actually black, uh, lamp black from White Knight, I think. And the indigo is from Daniel Smith. And then just using a tiny bit of yellow and just seeing how that would interact. And yeah, so I'm, I'm really happy I have these sort of rough sketches. And I think this is something I want to continue to work on and explore even more. And I also was in my uh, Lynx face, so I did a, a silhouette of that. Uh, I have also been quite obsessed with post boxes. I don't really know why. They are also, many of them are yellow, which if you know, I mean, yellow is not my favorite kind of color, but I had a really good time doing this. So first I did these that were just yellow post boxes and I thought, thought had a really fun, interesting shape. And then I thought I need to do all of the Scandi countries. So we have Iceland, Denmark, Finland, Åland, Norway, and then Sweden. Like that. We have some experimenting here again. This was experimenting with masking fluid, but this masking fluid uh, sort of ripped up underneath so I didn't like that. And here I had this wash of this sort of mixed color. I can't remember what it is now but it's some form of granulating blue and I just wanted to save that color so I, I painted it out here and then later I came back and I added these oh, mica flakes. Uh, these mica flakes. I have them in the shop if you're interested and I just glued them on and I also have these little flower cut out from another project I've done with my silhouette and I just saved them and, and put them on here trying to sort of go back a little bit to my art journaling scrapbooking roots. So here I had a really fun time with some dandelions, painting the different colours on watercolour paper and then cutting them out, gluing them back together. And I just really, really love this one. And every time I flip through the, the sketchbook, uh, or now if I see this page, it gets me really, I get really happy because I just really love it. And also this one, even though it's not as colourful, but I just really like it. Dandelions is something so... <laughs> I don't know, I just really like them. They're so like rebellious and so happy and they, I don't know, I just really like them. Uh, <laughs> here we have a dressage saddle uh, with, um, I don't know what you call it, underneath. And here I did some different patterns. And because I did that with colored pencil, they sort of transferred on the other side. But yeah, it's sort of, uh, I was really missing my old days as a dressage writer. And I feel like this is like my most comfortable seat, you know? So I was really missing that. And, I, you know, this is my way of sort of working through that. And of course I had to add a little bit of Ginny for some special touches. Here I'm just documenting I had uh, this flower in my window and I could find each of these on one on one flower so and I tried to pull the flowers away because I wanted to be more bushy so I just pulled all of them off and then I just painted all of them and here is some others I think these were inside the house some very quick sketches from when I was at the zoo just trying to capture the shape and not so much details so I really like this page. Well, I like the, the shapes of them. And then here I was too busy looking at the giraffe. They were just, they were totally flirting with me, so. <laughs> a page here about the daydreamer. I wanted to do another sort of this uh, collage uh, paper piecing style again. So I did a few thumbnails. And here is the finished result. And I really, really like it, so. Yeah, I think I want to do more of this. These are, I think, some of my happiest pages. Lupine, Smerblomor, just really loose watercolor, a little bit of detail with color pencils, and yeah, I, I really love these pages. And it's actually some the like only page I haven't put the date on, but yeah. 
I'm starting to actually paint with the Agatha Apothecary set and you can see this so very early because I still call it the Poison set. I decided to change the name from Poison to Apothecary because I have another watercolor set that is called Potion, not Poison, but I think they're too, the words are too close. So I decided to change that. But here I just I was sitting outside in the sun painting. I had a really good time. So we have a little bit of flowers. I'm not too happy with how I use the colors here. We have a skull that I'm actually pretty happy with. And then I tried to do a portrait of Geraldine McEwen as Miss Marple. And I really like this one. I really like the colors I've used. And I like the sort of line art of the foxglove behind her. And yeah, um, I'm really happy with this one actually. I mean, I'm not very good at portraits. So for me, that's that's pretty good. Here I'm still working on that same set. Here I used some Prismacolors to draw the different flowers that have inspired the colors. And I've used this to create a pattern that will be part of the set. And I'm just really happy with, with how I did this. And yeah, this is one of my favorite pages. And I just had to put a little bee sticker on the side here. And then here I just had some fun experimenting with the um, with the colors and see how they float together and how vibrant they are. I did try to scan this page in because I thought it could be a fun like a postcard or something, but I just couldn't make it happen. This um, this neon color, the opium one, is just too bright and with the scanner it just it can't do that and I can't I'm not good enough to compensate for that in editing so but yeah I, I took some color pencils some white gel pen and just had a really good time and I loved how the colors look different when they are like flowing into each other so after I played with some ink from Jane Davenport <laughs> I decided to do that for the colors that were coming out in July just like a product fo um, photo here but then I decided to do that with all of the other sets that I've made so the pretty potion colors the magical colors and you can see here that the um, the Newton color which is a very granulating black it really travels and sort of granulates all of the other colors too the Jane colors Almoge which is the only colors that I have that isn't any glimmer or any shine to it the Dima set which I think is my favorite of all of these I just love love how this one looks. The Lost and Found which is a very dark and moody set but looks pretty cool. And then the Daydreamer and of course here it says Agatha's Poison but the Agatha Apothecary set. I did this swatching page uh, for the Da Vinci's Earth Friendly Palette curated by Denise Soden. I will link that if you're interested in my thoughts about this palette. And here, uh, the rest of the pages is really just me trying to work with that palette and see what I think about it. Trying to do some human colors. Uh, not too happy with that. Uh, I wanted to do some dogs. Obviously, I feel more comfortable painting animals. So I decided to do Horace and Garrick from Paul Dark. I mean, they are the true stars of that show. So... <laughs> Um, here I have just a very light wash of Digitalis and Aconitum and then some pencil sketches on top. A quick little doggy sketch, a quick little <gasps> Juni sketch here <laughs> with some butterflies, also with that Da Vinci palette. I think she looks so cute here. <laughs> we have a bad word because I was not feeling it that day. But this one I'm actually really happy with. It's the Da Vinci palette as well. And I just used this pen that I have in the shop about the, the grey colour to do the tattoo. So when I was adding water and the layers on top, it would sort of run a little bit. And I just really love that sort of texture that would give. Some more with the Da Vinci palette. Just having some fun and exploring a little bit. And then the last one is another attempt to a portrait. And that is this sketchbook. I have thoroughly enjoyed working in it. I think it's been really fun. It's a good size. I mean, yeah, it is. I'm saying that hesitantly because I do think I prefer a little bit more, but the most recent ones I have used and probably used has been in this landscape format. And I really enjoy working from 
from one page through the next. I really enjoy the square format too, uh, as this one can be, especially if you size up a little bit, it takes up the whole space. But I think this one is really fun. It's been really easy to take on the go, uh, even though I didn't take it out as much as I wished. But when I was at the zoo or out here painting, it's been really nice. So I have ordered another one, <laughs> well, I say I've ordered it, it is actually back there in the drawer, uh, in A4, and, but it's not bound like this, I think it's ring bound, but yeah, so I will see how I will, if I like it as much when it is sized up, because all of the sketches in this one are fairly small, uh, and all of the, like, it has not been a lot of wet washes with it, and I wonder if that will impact how I feel about the paper but so far I really like it and for the price it's really really good I haven't really had any of those issues that you typically have with a cheap cellulose paper so if you can get a hold of uh, in let me say so if you're looking for a cheaper alternative um, sketchbook but it still has a good quality I would highly recommend the Sea White of Brighton um, it is, like I said, branded with the local art shop, but I think if you just search Sea White of Brighton, you can find it in your, in your store, or, uh, I would assume Jackson have them too. The links that are down below for this one is where I bought it, but, I mean, you can just check. And all of the links are down below to all the products I have mentioned, to videos, to... Um, the stickers if you want to show Amy Holiday some love. I love her art so I shout her out whenever I can. So everything that I can remember I have linked down below. I hope you have enjoyed this very short quick sweet little video about what I've been working on through the summer and yeah hit the like button if you like it, subscribe and come back on Thursday for a new studio vlog.